Hello, this is Kevin Chaudhary. Today I'll be talking about projections. By projections, what I mean is chart projection. Our basic aim is to understand the different types of chart projections and their utilities for different purposes, different areas. Now, projections are basically of two types. One is mathematical projection and other one is perspective projection. Uh, in a way, if you see, if we have to construct a chart, basically we use the mathematical property of the projection. But to understand the projection, we uh, make use of the perspective projection principles. So if I have to make a Mercator chart with natural scale on a certain latitude, I need meridional path. I can create graticals, right? And in case I want to explain the Mercator chart, then I can do an experiment whereby I take a transparent globe with a point source of light in the center of the globe, I wrap a cylinder around it, switch on the light and switch it off and try to capture the picture of graticule on the inner concave or inner surface of the cylinder that would be Mercator chart. The way Mercator chart can be created mathematically and the way Mercator chart can be understood with the help of light and shadow principle are the two different ways of understanding any projection. Now projecting small areas on a plane sheet may not be very difficult. For example, making a plan of a building, a market area, a platform, or for that matter, small town, small township. But problem arises when uh, we need to project the spherical earth or spheroidal earth on flat plane. Now, it is like how you make a shell expansion plan of the ship. It is like three dimensional ship surface projected on two dimensional plane sheet. Same way, if we have to project the spheroidal earth on flat surface, we come across certain difficulties. Many of the mathematicians have presented different types of projections. We'll try to understand all of them. In a philosophical way or for that matter, even in a mathematical language, we may say most projections can be considered as conical projections. How? I would explain you. Suppose this is a cone. And this cone is tangenting over the globe as follows. This is the parallel on which the cone is tangenting or hugging the globe. Now, this is the apex of the cone. If I take the apex to infinity, if I take the apex to the infinity and the two sides of the cone tangent the globe, then it can be considered as a cylindrical projection. This is because the apex is in the infinity and the two sides will be considered as parallel. Now if the apex is brought down to the globe itself, touching the globe, then the projection surface becomes a flat. So all the projections can be considered conical in a way. A normal conical projection, the apex might be a little bit away from the globe and in zenithal projection, the apex is hugging the globe itself and in the cylindrical projection, the apex goes to infinity. However, for normal understanding, if I have to categorize the projections, then I would say there are basically three main projections. That is cylindrical projection, zenithal projection and conical projection. First of all, let us understand these projections with the help of light and shadow on the screen principle. So suppose this is cylindrical projection. There are two types of cylindrical projection. That is Mercator projection and then transverse Mercator projection. Conical projection one standard parallel conical projection, two standard parallel conical projection, and zenithal projection, mnemonic, and stereograph.
Now in the Mercator projection, if you consider this as globe which is transparent with point source of light in the center of the globe and if we put the cylinder circumscribing the globe and the light is switched on, the shadow of parallels of latitude and the meridians, that is a graticule, what falls on the inner cylinder, inner concave of the cylinder, the distance between the parallels of latitude keeps increasing as you go towards the pole. Polar areas cannot be represented on the Mercator jump. In transverse Mercator projection, everything becomes 90 degrees or normal to the normal projection. For example, cylinder is placed like this. Now, you can see the cylinder is tangenting one of the meridians and inferior meridian. Now, what happens is the band, narrow band around the meridian all over from equator to pole, anywhere, can be represented very, very accurately. This is transverse Mercator projection, right? Both these projections can be very well understood with the help of light and shadow principle. One standard parallel, if this is the earth and here is a cone placed on top so that one of the parallels of latitude is tangented or hugged, then if I switch on the light from the center of from the center of the transparent globe, what will be projected on the inner surface of this cone is called conical projection, one standard conical projection. Now this one standard conical projection when it is opened out, when it is cut open say from here, it may be 120 degrees, then what it means that 360 degrees of the earth is represented on 120 degrees of this chart which means 1 degree on this chart is equivalent to 3 degrees of actual earth. Two standard parallel conical projection can be understood as a cone which is impregnated. Then what happens is when the light is switched on, the various graticules which are the various features and graticules which are projected on the inner surface of this cone, this will be called two standard parallel conical projection. Then the distance between the two parallels of latitude in this projection are adjusted sometimes to make it orthomorphic, in which case it may be called Lambert's conformal projection. Conformal means orthomorphic. Now gnomonic projection is the one in which the light is placed at the center of the sphere, that is a transparent sphere and a plane is tangenting some point on the earth. When the light is switched on, what happens is the graticule and features are projected on the surface. Now, what is specialty of gnomonic projection is every grid circle would appear straight line on this chart or conversely any straight line that is drawn on this chart is actually a great circle. That is the shortest distance between the two places. Now, gnomonic projection has the light in the center of the sphere. If the light is kept on the diametrically opposite point, right, and switched on, all the features and graticules which are projected will represent the stereographic projection. Now, depending on where the tangent surface is, a projection may be called Polar gnomonic, oblique gnomonic, equator gnomonic, or polar stereographic, oblique stereographic, and equator stereographic projection. Stereographic projection is a conformal projection. Two standard parallel conical projection originally is not conformal, can be made conformal. Mercator projection is a conformal projection. Now we must understand why we need different types of projections uh, for different purposes. Now to understand these projections, their utilities for different purposes by light and shadow principle, we must understand one thing that if there is a tangent point, then that point is most accurately represented on the chart with zero distortion. If there are any tangent lines or meridians etc, those areas will be most accurately represented. Likewise, here if a parallel of latitude is tangented, it means that that parallel of latitude and features on that parallel of latitude will be most accurately presented. So if we have a country which is running east-west, for example a country which is running along a parallel of latitude, the best projection for representing that country on the chart 
is the conical projection because that country would be most accurately represented. Distortion increases as you go away from tangent line. For example, if you have a Mercator projection, the accuracy is very high in equator. If we have transverse Mercator projection, the accuracy is very high on the tangent meridian, inferior meridian, including polar areas and a narrow band, say for example, 4 to 5 miles around the tangent meridian. Likewise, in stereographic projection also, the accuracy is maximum near the tangent point. We might need a projection to compare the areas of the different territories in a country, for example, for say statistics reasons. So we might choose a projection that is equal area projection. If we need to transfer the bearings on a chart from one place to other place, it is very important that the meridians are parallel to each other. Parallels of latitude are also parallel to each other and the two are perpendicular to each other. We might need a projection in which the areas in near vicinities, they maintain the bearing and shape. So for that, we need orthomorphic projection. Orthomorphic is conformal projection, which we may find in case of Mercator projection.